Minions, we have a problem. To be fair... When have I ever been fair? It's tough out there. What do we do when we go out recruiting? What do we look for? Chaos. Do we have anybody that'll fit that bill? The Kardashian sisters. They're witches. I know somebody. A psychopath? A dark triad. Trump is the king of chaos. You have to admit that. The Moocher is still sleeping. Answer the phone. I don't, I don't feel like doing a reading right now. I, I'm just waking up. Let's get it. Why is this poor not? It is your job to do that. I'll be right there. Okay. I wasn't even logged on to talk to these psychotics. I can't believe you. No, he's at the doctor. He called and he told me that they wanted him to come in and review his test results. I'm sure he'll be here any minute. You're listening to Business This Week on Radio Zolin, KMOJ 101.5 FM. Well, a reasonably good one. His Macbeth was a little weak. Wait, for what? For you to explain some more? Or do you want to kill me too? Let's just think about this for a minute. Oh, sure, now. Now you want to think about it. If you had thought about it then, this all could have been avoided. I mean, how likely is an escaped psycho killer? There are no loony bins around here. Where could he have come from? This is not a movie. This is reality. An escaped psycho killers from out of nowhere, hell bent on killing a specific bunch of innocent people, is about as real as a spontaneously generating zombie apocalypse. Hold the weapon like it was part of your body. You know how to hold a sword, don't you, yeah, Mr. Katano? No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You more all with this starting. Like your life is imperfect 
because I cannot taste your tea or smell your stupid flowers. I am exactly who I am supposed to be. I am bitter and stronger than Alex ever was. And stronger and more advanced than you. I always hated your obsession for Alex. You would talk about time lapsing back to see her. You would talk about her every chance that you had. You want to stick me with your little plastic knife. Huh, Helga? Well, do it. Give it to me right here in the shoulder. Right where the worms have already laid their eggs. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Oh, where are your jibes? Your gambles? Your songs? Your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. <sighs> Not one now. Expanding two decades of business, entertainment, and government. It's Business This Week with Saul Mejia. Now, from the studios of Radio Zolin, KROJ 101.5, here is your host, Saul Mejia. So, oh, okay. welcome, so welcome, Ms. Donna Lee Hazen. Thank you for being here today with us. It's an honor to have you. You are one of the most amazing people I met. One of the things that I love about you is your personality, your attitude towards things. You're one of those people... I don't think you ever have anything negative to say about anybody. You're one of those people, every single time you have something positive to say and you bring light and you bring positiveness to every single situation, no matter where you are. And people like you are awesome. And I think they're vital. They're very important to have in this planet because the rest of us, we're cranky old men. So we need to have a little bit of positiveness, <laughs> you know, in life. And you're one of those people that I don't think anybody can say otherwise. I think you're, you're a wonderful human being and that shows in your work. So I always said, you know what, you can have the biggest talent in the planet, but if you have an attitude, if you have a bad attitude, nobody wants to work with you. And if you have a great personality, everybody wants to work with you, regardless whether you have talent or not. Everybody will love you just because of the person that you are. And I think you are able to have a little bit of both. So you got talent and you got personality, and I think that's the key to success. So welcome to our show, and it's a pleasure and honor to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Saul. Um, I'm honored to be here and um, to talk to your audience. I know you have a huge audience and thank you for those kind words. I do think that in this world, I think the most important thing is to be nice and is to be kind. Well, can you do me a favor and please say hello to the San Fernando Valley? Well, hi everyone. Um, you know, I'm excited to be talking to you today. Um, and uh, I have lots of new information. Awesome. All right, well, can you tell us how did you begin your career? At uh, the beginning of my career? Well, actually, I've had, I think you know, Saul, I've had two careers. Um, I started out in show business. Um, I did a lot of uh, beauty pageants when I was younger and I was going to college. And so I got discovered um, for Fantasy Island and um, I appeared in those days, there were only the three networks and then they had huge films. So I did a lot of small parts in big productions. Uh, but then I uh, went back to school. Um, I started, a, actually I've been to every college in Orange County. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, I was, a, I was a cheerleader at Cypress College. Um, I got um, an AA degree in theater arts from Fullerton College. And, and then I got a chemistry degree from Cypress College. And then I went up to UC Berkeley and I took an acting class and I really liked it. And that's when I won Miss San Francisco and I got discovered for 
for Fantasy Island. So I did that, um, and I had a great time. I become I became one of the Fantasy Island girls. Uh, but then um, I I stopped I stopped my showbiz career, and I went back and I finished my, finished my bachelor's and I got my MBA at Pepperdine University, and I went into uh, the technology business, hardware and software. Wow, very interesting. So yeah. you you like a little bit of both still? Um, actually. Now, um, I'm a very, very driven person. So I put my heart and soul into my acting career, and I have for probably the last eight years. But when I was in business, I was just as driven. Um, and luckily, my husband, Paul, um, was an executive in marketing. He was the VP of um, new products a VP of marketing, a sales and marketing for new products at Hunt Wesson. And so I went into marketing. I started as a product planner at Epson America. And I'm very, very lucky to have had great mentors along the way. My mentor at Epson America was the VP of, and that's a huge company. It's a division of Seiko. And so I, I worked for Ron Prather and he was the VP of marketing, of sales and marketing for um, for uh, Epson America. And I handled yeah. desktops and notebooks, notebook computers. So in those days I could build a computer. <laughs> you know? And then as I progressed in my career, um, I became first a product manager and then I became a director of marketing for ERP companies, enterprise resource planning companies, including SAP, um, you know, and Bond. In those days, we had Bond and Oracle. Um, and then I became a vice president of marketing for a company called SpotSync. And I loved it. You know, I loved marketing. It's what I did really in those days was I started the advertising and marketing and PR departments. And so what I would do, you know, I handled trade shows, I handled advertising, I handled marketing, which included the website. I did technology writing, um, but I also publicized the companies that um, I was with. So I had this software where I would go through every month and I would try to find stories that were about uh, the, the product that, um, that, you know, I represented. And then I would approach those magazines and try to get stories published. And I was very successful at that because it was something that I loved to do. And that's something that I've brought into my film career. Hmm. Well, what were some of the challenges or struggles that you had to encounter through the years? In business, um, there are lots of struggles, you know? I mean, everybody says that uh, the film business is cutthroat <laughs> and terrible. <laughs> and, you know, there are, there are um, there's a lot of competition um, in the film business, but there's just as much in business. And, you know, because you're a businessman, um, especially if you're a woman, you know, it's like I, I rose to really high positions and um, most people in the world are really, really nice. And if you know what you're doing, they respect you and they listen to you. Um, but you know, you always run into, run into that certain person <laughs> you know, who doesn't want to work with you. And I found that by just being really nice and welcoming and being interested in them that I could, you know, I could um, melt the, the barriers that were between us. Wow. Yeah, actually, in my experience, what I call that, uh, those are experiences. Those are the people that they actually just educate you to know the next time you know how to react better. So if they do you wrong, what I do is learn from it and say, okay, 
I got this. Now, the next time you try it, you try it differently and you know exactly what to face. So I just call them lessons. You know, those are lessons that we have in life. But at the end of the day, like I was saying, I don't think anybody can stop you. I don't think anybody can stop who has a smile, who has a uh, positive attitude and wants to do things because there will be a even a 10% most, if you most, which I still think is a lot, but probably like 5% in reality that are not gonna be happy and they're not gonna be comfortable, with, which of course, I mean, it's just part of being a human. But I think yeah. the large majority of people can really see right through, you know, people just like you, or like Joe Williamson, which is the person that we have in common, you know, yeah, they're, just, really, they're really awesome people where you're like, wow, I mean, if somebody doesn't like them, it really, it's, I don't wanna be biased, but it really feels, somebody tells me something negative about Joe, I would say, <laughs> That's just you. That's just really, that's just you. I'm sorry, but the man really, he wouldn't harm anybody. I don't think he will purposely do anything negative yeah. to anybody. He's an amazing human being. And the same thing that I see in you. I think you're one of those people, like I said, from the moment that, that anybody meets you to every single time we get to see you, you have a smile on your face. How can anyone be mad at, at somebody that smiles all the time and has a positive attitude? I think it's just, they're having a bad day and they need to take it on somebody. But in reality, I mean, there's nothing not to like about people like you. Well, so, you know, you've been around me a lot in um, in real life. So, you know that I smile all the time and everyone asks me, why don't you smile in your pictures? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, really, my personality is to smile. But, you know, I don't know why there are, I have like two or three pictures I like that are smiling. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, but really... I am a positive person, um, and I think that's the main thing. I think, in order to, um, in order to be happy in this world, you have to be you have to be positive. You know, you have to be grateful for everything that happens to you. And so you you've had to go through the ups and downs of life to know to just be grateful for everything that happens for the nice people that you meet. I mean, I didn't even know you. And I, I remember that you took a video of me accepting my award and you were the only one that did. I was so grateful because I think it was the best actress award. And I mean, that's that means a lot to me. And then with, with Joe, Joe is one of my best friends. I mean, he's like a ray of sunshine in my day. Every time he calls, um, he just, you know, he showers you with encouragement and compliments and tells you the good things about yourself, which I think is, you know, makes a great manager, especially if if you're calling him about a problem. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, that, that's what I was saying. So it feels great to work with people such as yourselves, you know, both you and Joe, I think are really awesome people that you inspire people to want to be like you and continue to work with people such as you because you actually enjoy it. You actually have fun. You actually entertain yourself just being part in that circle. Every time you, you, if we're in the set, like you're filming and you're in it, you really light up the whole room and you make people feel more at ease and more happy. And they, oh, I think okay. everybody enjoys what they do. So the next section is the part where we'll give you an opportunity to highlight some of the people which you are, we already mentioned, Joe, but uh, who were some of the people that helped you throughout the years in your career? Well, I've had so many people help me. Um, I've had, I've worked with so many great filmmakers um, and I've been very, very lucky. I have, you know, I've had a really long career, so I can't mention everyone, but I know that uh, Jared Masters was instrumental to the start of my career because, you know, I was the vice president of uh, marketing and technology. And then uh, my husband told me I could go back to show business because he knew I loved it. So when I came back, it was completely different. Anybody could make a film, you know, because they had the digital cameras. Um, and so I came back and it was a completely different atmosphere. And I did a film called Slink with Jared Masters, who's a brilliant young filmmaker. And we got along so well that I did my first uh, maybe six films with Jared and he would write roles for me. And it was just a really, really fun set. Um, and then, and then, um, one of the, the big turning points in my career and where I met Joe was working on Gregory Hatanaka's 
uh, Samurai Cop 2, Deadly Vengeance, and that had tons of stars in it. But I am very grateful to Gregory for giving me a role with Tommy Wiseau, who is famous for The Room. And uh, James Franco did, did a film about him, and he won a Golden Globe. I think it was the, the, you know, I can't remember the name of the film, but um, it was it was a great film and it got all sorts of attention. And I think that that was uh, the jump start to my career because I only had I had a really short scene with Tommy, but it, I didn't at the time I didn't know who he was, but he was so great. I was supposed to be showing him how to use a sword. And I didn't really know how to, <laughs> so he took me off set and he showed me how to teach him how to how to use the sword. And I mean, he was so dynamic. I, I knew there was something special about him, and I, I think that's why the room is just—it's a legendary film. I mean, it's shown all around the world, and they have they have special festivals for it every year. They have one at UCLA every year. So that's where I met Joe. I think Joe was publicizing the film and he became my manager after that. And then I started working with Dustin Ferguson, who, you know, Dustin is amazing. He's, he's a brilliant, brilliant um, young filmmaker and his career has just skyrocketed. I did my first film with him in Lincoln, Nebraska when um, he was still living there. And then I did Nemesis Five with him. And Akia Leong was supposed to play my father, who's, Akia is my mentor. So he was supposed to play my father in the film and he got sick right before. So Joe and um, I brought in Mel Novak, who, who is a legend. And he played my brother in the film. And to this day, that's one of my favorite scenes. Guy White was the cinematographer and um, Mike Reeb just wrote a fantastic scene. It was, it was a really difficult scene. Um, and a key helped me with it. Um, and it's, it's still one of my favorite scenes, just the way it's shot and everything. It was my first fight scene. And um, it was just a great experience. We filmed that in Nebraska too. And then when Dustin moved out to California, um, I helped him in certain ways, you know, cause I mean, he's one of my favorite people. Um, I introduced him to Joe and Joe is now his manager. And uh, Dustin's career has just skyrocketed. I mean, you probably know about all of his, his special deals more than I do right now, you know, um, but we did, uh, he wrote Robo, or Mike Reeb wrote Robo Woman for me, but Dustin came up with the concept, and um, I love the script, and I love action movies, um, and I love every time I work with Dustin. This year, I've worked on Iraq NATO too, and we shot that at the beach, and it was just a lot of fun, and then we, I, we did the dino, the dinosaur movie. I still don't know the name of it because I know it's top secret. But Joe was on the set. I met Julianne Ream, and I played Butch Patrick's wife, and that was just so fun. You know, so um, I, uh, I look forward to working with Dustin again. Um, um, he, I. He knows that I always want to be in all of his films. So, um, Justin, <laughs> you know, if anything comes up. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, and uh, Dustin has been instrumental in the rise of my career. Gregory Blair cast me in Garden Party Massacre. And it's a horror comedy. And it's won tons of awards and gotten great reviews. Uh, Gregory's the star in it. Gregory and... Um, other people are the stars in it. I had a co-starring role as this crazy person named Melanie. But a lot of the filmmakers I work with now say that they saw that film and that's why they cast me in their films. 
And it's because Gregory is just such a great screenwriter and director and actor. I mean, in the film, I'm fighting with David Leeper over Gregory's character. And Gregory plays this really, how should I say it, really dense character who doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't even know we're fighting over him. <laughs> you know? And that's what makes it funny. Um, and so that was, that was a very important film. Um, and then, um, then I did a film called Finding Purpose Road to Redemption. And it's a film that I love. Um, I played Sky Cahill in it, and it, it's a mix of drama and comedy. And um, that film has won a lot of awards, and the role was written for me, and I'm very, very grateful. And I hope that people will see it. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, and this year, uh, oh, <laughs> the, the most important film, I, I almost forgot, um, was a film called Bad President. And it the director was Param Gill. And I owe my life in this business to Robert Amico. He's one of my very best friends, and he's the nicest person in the whole world. And he gave me the role. It was a SAG film. And we, Robert and Justin Shankaro, who's won a Golden Globe, for Picket Fences, and um, anyway, he's uh, Justin has been in the business forever, and um, he's an amazing actor, and Robert Amico is a great actor. He's from the, the Actors Studio. So all three of us played Eddie Griffin's minions, and so all of our scenes are with Eddie Griffin, and I mean, can you imagine... Uh, I was so starstruck and Eddie Griffin is a, is a genius. He's such a talent. I mean, he would be cracking everybody up on set. And then as soon as the camera started rolling, he would just snap into his character of Lucifer. He, he um, is why the movie is just so successful and so funny, along with Jeff Rector who plays Trump. And Jeff is incredibly funny. People don't realize that it's a comedy, you know, and it's hilarious, you know, I, and it has nothing to do with politics because it was written by a journalist. And, and so it just really takes um, things that Trump really did. And it just, you know, it just, uh, it's kind of like a satire. So it's just a really funny a film and I hope that people will watch it um, because um, I'm so grateful to Robert for putting me in that film. Um, it was a sad set. Um, we stayed at the Excalibur in Las Vegas. Um, it was like a long shoot and it was just, it was so professional. Um, it was, it was like how I started out, you know, when they only had they only had those big projects. Um, and and so um, I'm just very grateful to Robert and I'm hoping that someday I can pay him back. <laughs> you know, it's like he does much bigger films than I uh, do and he's a producer. So, uh, you know, maybe someday I'll have that power, uh, but I don't yet. <laughs> so I'm always looking for roles for Robert though, but he, he can only do sad roles. Um, and then this year, I wanted to talk about a film that I did in New Mexico. It's called Distortion. And it was with Rod Smith. And Rod is an award-winning screenwriter. He uh, wrote May Day and Lockdown, and they, they were both released by Lionsgate. And Rod is in an incredible um, screenwriter. He sent me the script and um, I was just blown away by the script and I wanted to play the role of Dr. Epstein, which was a different type of role than I've ever played because in the first place, she's a doctor, she's a psychiatrist um, and it's a very, very serious role. 
So we rehearsed for at least two months before we did the film. And it was the most, um, it was a great film shoot because I learned so much about acting and the role was fantastic. And I can't wait till the movie comes out and everyone can see it because the plot is so great. Um, and Rod is a great cinematographer too. But for me, it was just incredibly stressful because I had a million lines. I mean, I was in practically every scene and it wasn't, it wasn't the type of character where you could just ad lib if you forgot a word. You know, it was kind of like Shakespeare where it has to be exactly right. So I, I mean, seriously, I had a million lines and every night I had to go over my lines again, but we shot at night. So it, I mean, I was just really grateful that I remembered all my lines in the shoot and I just can't wait to see the film. Um, it should be out by 2022. Um, and um, Lainey Rhodes and Tatiana uh, Larea, who is Rod's wife, are in the film with me. Amara Rianne um, did the makeup and I love Amara. She, she was wonderful. Um, and uh, Michael Buran was in a different part of the film than um, I was in. So I never really got to meet him in person, but I just did an interview for Ion Entertainment with him. Um, because that's a show I've been doing for like 17 years, but I really only do it to promote films that I'm in now. So I've done tons of shows with Bill Obris Jr. and with Dustin, and um, I wanted to promote Distortion, so I did that with Michael, who is amazing in his own right, and you can find that on YouTube. And then I also, I, I don't want to forget anything because I have tons of uh, films coming up, but uh, my favorite project right now is a music video that I did called Black City Nights, and it's it's amazing how much I love that music video. Um, I was recommended for it by um, Alan Wagner, and I did a video called Rickman's Cobbs with it with him in 2017. And it got a million views around the world because it was so funny and so well made. And um, I think actually Rickman's Cobbs has done the most to let people know that I'm an actress because it got so many views. I mean, I, I had people from the UK asking me for interviews just from Rickman's Cobbs. And so um, Alan is a graduate of USC's film school, which is one of the top film schools in the nation. And he recommended me to his friend, Jared Piller, who is also a graduate of USC's film school. And the director was Nathan Castile, who is also a graduate of SC's film school. And it's a great duo called Always You. There are twins, it's Anton and Christoph Hockheim, and they're Eurasian like me. So, I mean, there I was, I love, in the first place, I love the song. I think that the twins are so talented, but the music video is just so creative and so, so well produced. And Justin McWilliams is the DP. And he is incredible. The lighting is incredible. Um, Nathan's girlfriend, Allison DeMoss, did my hair. And I mean, I love her. She's like one of my best friends now. And I doubt that my hair will ever look that good again. But she did an, an incredible job on it. And I am just so grateful to be a part of that music video. Um, it's, I sent it to my family. Um, to to my immediate family and to my extended family. And um, 
you know that my uncle is Tak Fujimoto. I never send anything to my family, you know, because they still, a lot of them still probably think I'm a vice president of marketing and technology. But I sent this video to everyone because I'm so proud of it. So I hope everyone will look it up. It's called Black City Nights and it's by Always You. And the views are rising um, really rapidly. I have to say my friends are probably really sick of me because, you know, and Joe is helping me promote it too. Thank God for Joe because um, it like doubled its views overnight a few, a few days ago. I check it every day because it's one I really want to go viral like Rickman's Cobbs. Um, so anyway, um, I just love that music video and I hope that everyone will watch it. Um, I will be doing uh, a film in, um, on August 1st called The Paradise Motel and the director and writer is Walter Hawk, Hawk Brenner and Hawk Bruckner. And um, Walter and I met doing Jared Masters films. And um, he sent me the screenplay at the beginning of the year. And we rehearsed for at least two months. We were going to shoot it in March. And then um, the shooting got delayed until August. And I'm glad because I'm the lead in it. So I have a lot of lines in that too. So we'll be shooting that. And then also um, my agent um, is Diana Carter. And I'm really proud to be with her. I'm really proud to have Jill as my manager and to have Diana Carter as my agent um, because they're both incredible people and they're both go-getters. And that's what you need in this business. They're people who have, they're loyal. They're incredibly loyal. I know that, you know, it's like, I don't really like to get involved in the, the um, negative parts of the industry, but I think the higher you rise, I think the more that you encounter it. And I know that someone, left Diana when she signed me, someone I didn't even know because I'm supposedly a scream queen too. And I'm not a scream queen. You know, I've done a lot of horror, but I've done just as much drama. I've just, uh, I've done just as much comedy. Um, I've done Shakespeare. We, in fact, the, the video that you um, sent me was for winning um, Best Actress for dark classics, which was Lady Macbeth, you know, so um, I'm, I'm not really a screen queen. Um, and anyway, I know that Diana has my back because of that incident. And I'll be doing a film for her right after the Paradise Motel. And it's about um, PTSD. Um, and um, I know that, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about it yet. <laughs> so I know that Diana's doing it with Tony Devon, who is an incredible actor and has been in tons of films. And I'm excited to be in that film. So that's coming up. I'm going to be, um, I'm playing the mother in uh, Cassandra Slavin's The Rose Wagon in December. And um, it's a family friendly film. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I'll be playing um, a person named Kiki Easy Street in Ian Stevens' Rescued Innocence. And I'm really excited about that because it stars Jennifer O'Neill, um, who you might remember from, she did a film, I think it was summer of 82 or something like that a long, long time ago. She plays this woman who these three young boys fall in love with. Anyway, she's gorgeous and she's a major actress. She's the main star in that. And my character plays a prostitute in the beginning, which is why my name's Kiki Easy Street. <laughs> but then at the end, it's about girls that are uh, rescued from, um, from the sex trade. And so I end up on the same ranch with the girls and 
at the end of the film, I'm rescued from prostitution. So I'm a completely different character and it's going to be like no makeup and just acting. So it's going to be um, a really, a really great role. And I'm looking forward to that. And I, I can't, um, I'm also going to be um, in a film called The Hostage Wife, uh, which also stars my friends Bishop Stevens and Lainey Rhodes. And it's from Amanda Foster. Um, I, I don't know when we're shooting that. And then, well, first, let me talk about Richard Rossi's Canaan Land. <laughs> it's a faith-based film, and it was up for Oscar consideration. Um, it's just been accepted into the Marina Del Rey Film Festival, and it stars Rebecca Holden, who is a regular on um, on. Oh man, I can't remember the name, but it's, you know, it's, everybody will know it. Um, she's a major star. I mean, she's got, she's a singer. Um, she's got the most beautiful voice I've ever seen. And she's gorgeous herself. Knight Rider with David Hassel, Hasselhoff. Everybody knows that. I can't believe I, I forgot it. But anyway, she was a regular, a Knight Rider. So she and Richard are the stars of the film. I play Richard's rich girlfriend who throws him out of the house. <laughs> you know? So it's another comedy role in a faith-based film. And I love the film. I hope that everyone will watch it. I believe it's available on Amazon Prime now. Um, and then I've got two films coming up with Richard Thrift, who is my new best friend. I, I love him. He redid my demo reel for me. Um, and he's, he's from England. He's got the best personality. He's so positive. And I'm playing the lead in his film called The Night Turned Gray. It's a sci-fi comedy drama. And it's an action film. And as you know, I'm a pole dancer and I take, uh, I take uh, Kang Sudo martial arts. Um, and my Sabum Nin is Master Rick St. Clair. Thank you, Rick, for everything you've taught me. Um, so I'm excited about that film. It won't film until 2022. But in August, we're going to be filming a TV series called uh, A Demon Called Grace. And I'm going to be playing Medusa's sister. And I believe that my name is Eurace, Eurace. It's it's something like that. I don't, I'm, I'm Richard, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> okay. But anyway, it's a great role. It's Medusa's sister. And I did play Medusa in Albert Payan's um, upcoming film. Uh, so, so it's a legend that, or I, it's a story that I know really well. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. And I, I think those are the films that I have coming up. Um, I don't, don't think I've forgotten. Oh, yes, I did forget. I, I, oh my gosh. The reason why I was a little bit late today was I was trying on a business suit for JJ Stock because I'm supposed to be playing a really, really wealthy businesswoman. So I have this St. John suit from my business days. And so he wanted to see what it looked like because I needed to look conservative. <laughs> I don't think JJ thinks that I can look conservative. No. So anyway, I've got to send him a video of this suit. And it's like, it's up to here. <laughs> you know? And I was going to wear it on this show. And then I just thought, uh, <laughs> you know, okay. now I've got to change. <laughs> so, because you know me like this. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be... Um, working with JJ at the end of this month, and Joe is going to be playing my husband. So Joe is gonna to have to be wearing a great suit because he's gonna to have to look like a very rich businessman. And um, I don't know if I told him that. So Joe, if you're listening, <laughs> you've got to get a great, great suit because Joe is, you know how Joe dresses in real life. He's um, He dresses great, but 
He's like me. He's more into comfort. <laughs> so, anyway, we have to wear suits and um, look really high society and all of that. So we will, JJ. But JJ is one of my favorite people. Um, and you met JJ because we filmed in your office. We, we filmed in Three Dragon. And I don't know if you've seen the trailer to that, but it is the best trailer, almost one of the best trailers I've ever seen. I'm so um, thankful to be in that film because JJ is like an international superstar um, because of his acting, but also because of his martial arts skills. And he does like five movies at a time. So um, I'm going to be working with Joe on a film called The Boss Man. And then in August, I'm going to be working with JJ. And he's doing so many films. I think the film is going to be The Asian Assassin. But we're also supposed to be doing a film with the Kia Leong called um, The Assassin Unleashed. And um, Aki is producing it, and uh, JJ and I, I'm playing Aki's wife in that film, and JJ um, is one of the stars in it too, but um, I think we're still working on the script on that. So I think the film that I'm working with JJ in, in August is The Asian Assassin, which I've been attached to for about two years. Um, and JJ could change it, you know, it's his project, but I'm supposed to be playing um, an evil assassin because JJ is always good, <laughs> you know. I mean, JJ, um, he acts with his heart and you can just tell he puts his heart and soul onto the screen and he comes up with these great ideas. So he, well, you saw him on the set of M3 Dragon he directs you with ideas that he comes up with. I mean, he, he works from the script, but he comes up with these brilliant ideas on set. And so um, it, has, it has the effect of just making the acting very, very natural because it is, <laughs> you know, it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much how he makes you feel at the moment. So anyway, um, I'm really excited to be working with JJ again. You know, I've been, I've been harassing him <laughs> for the last year. Okay, JJ, uh, when, when are we going to work together again? When, when am I going to interview you? And he's always so busy, like running around the world, that um, I'm just really, really grateful to have these dates uh, locked down. Right. Well, to almost finalize it, what advice would you give to someone who's just getting started in the film industry? Um, I would say, and I really mean this from my heart, um, I don't believe in education just because I'm Eurasian. I believe in education because I think you need a basis in your life to in order to know how to do everything in the workplace um, correctly. Um, my business background has allowed me to approach my acting career in a business fashion. And I, I, have, I, I have no doubt that my um, MBA has helped me with my acting career. But, you know, I mean, I've had to keep on taking lessons too. I had to learn Shakespeare. Um, so I, I studied with Carol Foreman. I study with Alan Arkin's son, Matthew Arkin at South Coast Direct. I never stop studying. And you can never stop learning and stop studying. Um, and you can't come into this business just thinking that your good looks are going to get you everywhere, that you're going to get noticed overnight. I mean, this is a business for young people. I mean, most of the roles are for people 18 and younger. So it's easier for them to get those roles, but there's so much competition in this business. If you don't know your craft, um, 
it's it would be really really difficult um, to make it. I mean, I doubt that anyone that you see on TV has not studied. I mean, I've read that Jennifer Lawrence never studied, but if that's true, then she is a big exception to the rule, you know, because there are basics to acting. There are basic things that you need to know about hitting your mark, about, you know, all of these different things. Um, and you can't just go on to a set called, you have to build the backstory of your character. Um, and I think it gives you, having an education makes you realize that you're in something for the long haul, that you don't get crushed by every rejection. And this business, you face rejection every day. You know, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, if you can't take rejection, you might as well just get out of the business. And, and, you know, I've gotten so used to it, it doesn't ever bother me. But in the, but if someone does try to do something to me, or won't cast me, <laughs> you know, then I've got Joe, you know, constantly building me up and telling me, telling me how great I am, and that better things are coming down the pipe. And I, I just think, I thank God that Joe is always so positive and so amazing because you could get your feelings hurt about anything in this industry, you know, and things change every day, you know, films fall through, the financing doesn't come through. And I think you just have to, I think to be in this business, I think you have to, you have to be a positive person. I believe you need to be educated. And I think you need to be happy for the people around you. And I had a big wake up call two days ago. I, I have two beautiful daughters. My oldest daughter was a pharmaceutical rep for Santa Fe Aventus. She won tons of awards. She's the best salesperson I know. My younger daughter is a psychiatrist at UCLA. And she's, my whole family is driven, um, but she is off the charts driven. She's won every award um, in the world from the time she was young. And it's not because it just comes automatically, it's because she works so hard. I mean, my oldest daughter would do her homework, you know, and, and just go to bed. Misty would stay up all night doing her schoolwork. You know, and the girls were in soccer and did all of that. But she just won an award from Kaiser Permanente. She, she is a psychiatrist at UCLA, and she handles, she teaches there. She also handles um, a portion, uh, post, something on postpartum depression. And, I mean, every every year she's coming up with a new job. She handles, like, three jobs there. And she's got three young kids under six. But um, I, I posted about, you know, it's like my husband, my and my husband uh, was the VP of sales and marketing for ConAgra. He brought up the, self, the healthy choice food line. And then he went back and he, he's a certified financial planner now. He went back and he got his license. And now he's been listed for the last like eight years as a five-star wealth manager in Los Angeles magazine. He's completely driven too, like my daughter. And both of them get mad if I try to publicize them. I mean, they're the most humble people that I know. Um, and so I try to, with my husband, he just won't let me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but luckily he doesn't follow everything I do because he's too busy, you know, being a CEO. Uh, I mean, he works every day. So um, he doesn't know when I'm publicizing him, but I'm just very proud of him. And I couldn't be in this business without him. But with my daughter, what I'm most proud of her is she just won 
um, a Kaiser Permanente Excellence in Education Award. Um, wow. And, which is a big deal. And she only told me, and I sent it out to my whole family. And then I decided I needed to put it on social media. That I wrote that I'm most proud of my daughter for being humble and for being empathetic to others. Because she doesn't like, she never promotes herself. She only sends things to me because I'm her mother, even though she knows that I'm a publicist too. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so completely different from them. It's, I'm just as driven, but I'm in an industry where we promote everything. <laughs> we promote everything we do, you know? So it's completely foreign to me that people don't want publicity. Um, that people do things just because it's their job and they're good people. You know, they care about others. My husband cares about his clients more than anything, except his family. You know, and my, my daughter cares about her patients above all. She doesn't care about the promotion she gets or about the award she wins. She cares about her patients and being a psychiatrist, you can imagine the stories that she, that she could tell me if she could tell me, she can't tell me, <laughs> you know, but a lot of them are sad stories. I mean, she works with a lot of children. Um, and so whenever I get like too wrapped up in, in the social media stuff and, you know, too full of myself or when I start making everyone sick of me because I keep <laughs> promoting something too much, you know, I'm going to stop. And, and my other daughter too, my other daughter is the most humble person in the world. So I'm going to start thinking about my husband and my two daughters and remember that there's a higher purpose in life that yeah. show business is important. Um, it's a very important industry because you can make so many people happy. But um, there's a higher purpose in life and you need to care about other people. You need to care about the stories you tell. You need to care about, care about your cast and crew. Um, you need to want to uh, bring out the best product that you can um, because you're telling other people's stories. Hello, this is Noah Lee, the head monster talking, and I want to say congratulations to Business This Week with Saul on KROJ 101.5 FM. I wish you all the success, and please uh, listen to 101.5. I think that it's really incredible um, to be actually working with a company like Monster. This is Donna DeCruz and my inspiration is compassion. The start of the 70th Monaco Grand Prix. They saw the future. It's the future sound. I'm powered by the monster. Absolutely the best sound that you're going to get in something this small. They already dominated in the music sound quality. Incredible monster. And it's about monster power. It's happening. Monster has built a global following by making its product into a premium name. Thanks for doing what you do for the whole industry. Great products. You know, usually bugs sound tinny, monsters don't.
So I just want to take the time to say thank you so much for being here today with us. It's been very inspirational and I love to hear your stories and all that you have to go through in order to make it to where you are. And we know you're just getting started. People don't even imagine, but there's I know that there's a lot of great things to come and there's much more that we're going to accomplish together in the film industry, but as well as business. I would love to hear from you much more in the future. So please stay in touch. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, spending some time with us today. Well, thank you so much, Saul. You're one of my favorite people, and I really look up to you. I treasure uh, the business award, as you can see, well, my head's in the way. But <laughs> my business award is on my wall, <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce Award. Um, and you know so much about film. Let's stay in touch because you do all the things that a line producer needs to do and you need a great line producer for a great film um so we can do a lot together we will. And, yeah and thank you for having me on your show and um let's do it again all right take care god bless we'll see you soon okay bye <laughs>